Hello there. Uh, it's Martin Cover from Golf Bits Gold again. Uh, welcome back. Um, firstly, apologies for what happened last week. Um, I was away in Cape Verde and I went there two years ago and my VPN worked fine and everything was okay. But this year, um, two years on, that didn't happen. Um, so all I had was intermittent uh action from my iPhone hence the mixed messages um, but we did make a decent profit and we almost made a big profit with Kevin Kistner um, we had him one point each way at 50 to 1 in the WGC Dell Technologies match play championship but um, he got beat in the final by the um, informed steam train that is Scotty Scheffler who's now gone to world number one. Um, it was unfortunate that DJ almost knocked him, DJ almost knocked him out in the earlier round, um, the semi-final, but, um, and he won a six-hole, he won a playoff, Scotty, didn't he? A six-hole playoff. I didn't see any of it because of where I was, and it wasn't on, but um, he won a six-hole playoff against Matt Fitzpatrick as well. So we almost got Sc Scotty B, but he came through, um, he rolled over Kevin Kistner in the final and um, went to world number one. But um, some good signs from some players for the Masters there, but we'll come on to that when we come on to the Masters in two weeks' time. Um, but yeah, I mean, 50 to 1 place is 10 to 1, fifth of the odds, so we made five points because our losing bets, our other two losing bets lost. Um, we took John Rahm in the last 16. He lost in an extra hole playoff to DJ um, so we was a bit unlucky there but you know likely he wouldn't have been able to stop the steam train that was Scotty Scheffler but yeah I mean so that's a profit of what five points on the week um, we've come slightly out of our slump in that kind of Although we are treading water, we are going a little bit forward at the moment and we're coming out of that slump um, and in preparation for the Masters. And we've got four majors coming up. I'm not due to be out of the country now until September. Um, so we should be able to go through the spring and the summer um, without interruption. Um, touch wood. But we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I mean, in terms of the World Match Play Championships, I mean, looking at the data, I mean, there were some good performances, not just from the finalists, but from the semi-finalists, DJ and Corey Connors, and also Colin, Colin Morikawa seems to have played well, which is good preparation for the Masters. Um, and you can say the opposite really about, certainly about Jordan Spieth, um, who goes to one of his favourite tracks this week for the Vero, Valero Texas Open. Justin Thomas didn't perform well at all, really. Um, beaten by Kistner, but also didn't play well in his other matches. But, yeah, we're really nicely for the Masters. But, as I say, we've got the Valero Texas Open this, this week anyway. So, you know, a couple of tournaments to get our teeth stuck into. Um, the Commercial Bank Cat and Masters. I mean, this was a poor field for such an event. I mean, they had to reschedule it and they put it really into the wrong week. Um, they were never going to get the Americans to come over. So, you know, they could have had it next week for the Valero Texas Open, which is not the greatest of it. It's just a really a prep for some for next week and to qualify, but a week off for a lot of the big players. But yeah, a bit of... The DP World Tour, formerly the European Tour, not the best schedulers at all. Um, they haven't got anything this week coming up either. Um, but yeah, I mean, this looking at the data, the weekend seems to have been tough, particularly Sunday. Um, and our 100 to 1 shot, Oliver Wilson, actually got into a place. I was following it on Golf Live 24 um, with nine holes to play, but then. Dropped two shots and dropped out to tie 12. So, you know, I was getting excited there that we'd ever. I didn't think he'd win it, but I mean, with a winning score of seven under and he was four under overnight, he could have won it. But I, I thought we could get a place there, but it wasn't to be. But and, and again, another 
near Ishmis. Um, but yeah, I mean, this tournament fell into the lap of Ewan Ferguson. I mean, we spoke about him a couple of weeks ago in that he was in the lead going to the final round. And I said, I definitely don't want to be in Ewan Ferguson. I definitely think he'll feel the pressure and lose it. And if you were layer to lane, and that worked out to be the case. But I mean, looking at the scores, this just fell in his lap. You know, not, no one really played well on Sunday. And most of them didn't play well over the weekend. I mean... Ewan Ferguson of Scotland opened up with 67, but he had a 73 on Saturday and then managed a 70 on um, Sunday, which wasn't a bad score in this tracking conditions, but but nothing special. I mean, this really was a weak event. It was poor. I mean, the DP World Tour is suffering from just weak events in 2022. And I don't see how they're going to get, you know, the... USPGA Tour players to come over really it's really looking secondary and, and the Corn Ferry Tour the subsidiary USPGA event looks stronger um, now but yeah I mean Ewan Ferguson 67, 71, 73 on Saturday finished with a 70, got it done by one stroke the player I like best of those who are up there is Chaz Hanna the American who's trying you know, to do a Brooks Kepka and start off on the Europe on the DP World Tour and then you know try to qualify for the US PGA Tour rather than go down the Kung Ferry Tour route um, yeah I mean he, he missed up one stroke and he had a 75 on Saturday so that really messed him up and I think that he was probably the best player this week he had a 66 on Friday but I think he's one to watch and we can you know be on in the future uh, maybe you and Ferguson will turn a corner now now that he's won a one or two event. Um, in third place is Marcus Kinholt. I mean, Marcus Kinholt, we've been on him before. I mean, you know, he got in a tie for third uh, with Adrian Moronk, who, who really flopped it on Sunday when, again, he had another chance, yet another chance to win on tour. But yeah, Marcus Kinholt, 74, 65, 73, 71. I mean, you know, not great. Adrian Moronk, 66, 70, 72, in contention, 75 on Sunday. Moronk does seem to struggle on a Sunday unless, you know, he's yet another one. And, and most of the golfers on this tour are like this. They have to finish, come come from off the pace on Sunday to score well. When they're up there under pressure, they don't seem to be able to put it in. Uh, big tie for fifth. Um uh, Marcus Armitage, the bullet, uh, he was there, messed, his, messed up a bit, 73 on a Saturday. Gavin Green, who kind of reappears every now and again, uh, was in that tie for fifth. Played well, apart from the opening day, 77. So, you know, again, with a good score on the first day, he's winning it. But <clears throat> a lot of these players on this tour seem to kick in a, you know, a bad round every tournament. And that's the secret to winning. You know, you don't really want a bad day. But, I mean, you and Ferguson got away with it this week, didn't he? But, yeah, I mean, Justin Hardy was in that fifth. 76 opening day. Messed him up. Matthew Jordan got right up there into contention. 76 on Sunday. Messed it up. Pablo Lorenzo, who won a couple of weeks ago. 64-71. Nice opening. Really in contention. 75-74 over the weekend. Messed it up. Adrian Otegi, who, who can win on the tour, 70-70-70, time to step up on Sunday, 74, doesn't do it. Kelly Samuja, who we thought was one of our players to watch on the tour this year, um, a good player, but, you know, doesn't, doesn't get it done. He was in that tie as well, 74, 69-66, kind of sorts things out, and then it's a 75 when he's got a chance of winning it, you know? Uh, and then we drop down to tie for 12. Laurie Cantor there, who's really just not doing it this year. Um, Wilco Neonaiva looked to be going well at halfway stage, I saw. 268, but, you know, he's a, bit, he's a bit wild, and the ball can go anywhere off the tee. A bit like Cameron Champ on the US PGA Tour. And, and, and kind of looking at his... Looking at the data, does it over the weekend? 
<coughs> um, also net tie for 12th, Toy Bon Olison. Um, on the comeback trail, um, 7169 puts a 76 in on Saturday to knock him out of it and then can finish with 69. So, you know, bad score ruins it. Um, also in that tie, as I said before, was Oliver Wilson, 71, 70, 71. Looked solid all week. Needed to step up on a Sunday. Looked to be doing it on the first nine and then messed it up with, you know, back nine, 73. Uh, dropping down out of the top 20, just a couple bumbling under the top 20 who were well tipped up Romain Langast was well tipped up over with 66 so look good here 71 but then throws in 75 74 I, I wouldn't be back in Langast I think he just throws it away every time he's in contention and one of our big price favorites who bubbles under uh the South African Friston Lawrence 70 69 76 on Saturday to ruin his chance and then 71 finish off so yeah I mean not we weren't unlucky not to place but we had a good chance to place but it just wasn't to be um, I think Oliver Wilson's been struggling a bit this is one of his favorite courses and so he kind of showed that apart from the back nine when he had the chance to push on and win and he didn't do it so yeah but I mean you know we move on now um, as I say the tour takes two weeks off because you've got Valero, Texas. Next week they got a week off, and then we've got the Masters, which is a joint event. But to me, that's a USPJ event, so it takes a couple of weeks off. Um, but yeah, I mean, getting back to it, this week we'll be back on the train. So tips out for the Valero Texas Open on Tuesday, top twenty selections on Wednesday, and we'll also be looking at the Corn Ferry Tour again for the trial selections. Um, so yeah, I mean. Back to normal. Now we've got four majors coming up in April, May, June, and July. So really get into the meat and the bones of, of golf now. And we would expect to push on now from our weakish start, our trough, which we're starting to push out of now. We expect to get into profit now over the next four months and push on towards that 100 point profit margin that we average each calendar year. So yeah, so stick with it. I mean, that's my message is always golf betting. It's long term. You have to judge a golf service on a year. You can't, and previous years, you can't be short term about it. It's not horse racing. I mean, you shouldn't do it for horse racing. You shouldn't do it for football, but especially don't do it for golf. So yeah, I mean, keep up with us, yeah? Um, so yeah, I mean, subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe now. Special introductory offer of £10. Um, and there's also the free stuff on Twitter, both golf and football and cricket. So uh, at Martin Colwell one at Golf Bets Gold, you can pick that up. Um, I'll be doing some Cheltenham review. I'll be doing a Cheltenham review video probably tomorrow or Wednesday, and then I'll be doing an entry preview as well for those interested in horse racing. So look out for both of those. Yeah. But until I speak to you again, thanks for watching and goodbye.